Hello, and welcome to the second episode of Appropriate Audiences for the spring 2014 semester. I'm Matthew McGordy, and I'm joined by Amanda Dodson. Um, we had a third guest, but sadly they fell ill, so us two are going to have to be the, uh, you know, the powering force of this episode, but that's all right. This week we watched August Usage County, which is about a tragedy that happens um, in a dysfunctional family, and it focuses more around the three lives of three strong-willed women um, two of which are sisters, and one of which is their mother. Um, anyway, let's get on to the questions. So, um, did you have any expectations going into this film? Um, not so much about the film. Uh, I originally didn't know that it was a play originally, mm -hmm. but because the A-list of celebrities were in it, so Meryl Streep and Emma Roberts and, mm -hmm. you know, people like that, I expect, I'm sorry, I said Emma, I meant Julia Roberts. Anyways, um, but no, I expected it to be fantastic because you know like Meryl Streep is my idol I, yeah. everything that she does like turns into gold you know so um, yeah I did have some pretty high expectations for it yeah cool. I, um, I personally didn't have any I didn't know what the movie was about I was like okay movie all right um, I was told by the person I had gone with uh, mm -hmm. Jason that the movie was really good so I was like you know what I'll go in we'll see how this does and uh, it was a good movie at least I think it was yeah oh, I thought spoiler, it was alert. Spoiler, um, alert. Yeah, spoiler good movie um, <laughs> all right um, so, going in, you, you were aware that it was a play first, yes. I found out after. Um, uh, does knowing that it's a play add anything to the movie itself? Um, I was watching an interview with Julia Roberts and she was saying how, um, because it was originally a play, Tracy Less, I think, mm -hmm. um, wrote it, it, they tried to be as authentic to the play mm -hmm. as possible, you know, so things that you write and perform on a stage is very different from things that you can perform in a movie. Mm -hmm. um, and they try to be very authentic and stick to the script, which most movies don't do. Um, but yeah, there was one scene when they were fighting, um, Julia Roberts and um, her husband were fighting outside, and I could kind of tell that that was a play because they didn't really contrive it more for a movie. Mm -hmm. But um, no, uh, other than that, if I hadn't known that it was a play beforehand, I probably probably wouldn't have known. Yeah, going in, I mean, when I was watching it, I obviously had no idea. Mm -hmm. um, but by the end, I, I could, it, once I was told, I, like, thought back and was like, you know, this, this definitely had, like, a, uh, like a, a play feel to it. But it translated very well right. into the movie. I agree. And I was, I was interested in it. So I went, to, I went to Amazon and was like, I wonder how much this play costs. Maybe I should read it because I was really upset about something in the movie that we'll get to later. Uh -oh. um, so, and I read, like, the first, like, page or two. And it's like word for word, like what happens right. in the movie. It was insane. Which is fantastic. And as an actress, you know, I act a little bit on the mm -hmm. side. And so, like, you can't really change the words. You know, somebody took the time to sit there and write and spent years and hours on making the words fit. And there's something very magical and special about that, I think. And so you want to stick with that script. You know, the writer, Tracy, he spent time writing that, you mm -hmm. know, and so you kind of, it's rude, I think, to change it a little bit. So I liked that they were very authentic to mm -hmm. what the play was, um, which again is, is different from most, yeah. you know, switches, but. All right. So you, you were obviously, as you said, you, you, did, you did some acting. Yeah. Um, what did you think about the truly all-star cast in this movie? Fantastic. I, I mean, you know, Meryl Streep, again, I'm mm -hmm. telling you she can do no wrong. She oh, can she's play amazing. anything that she wants to do. She can D nothing, nothing. Everything that she is in is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. And um, she's a phenomenal character actor, and I think that she doesn't play, you know, the same generic role. There are a lot of yeah. actors and actresses that, you know, just play an ingenue or, you know, somebody else like that. But, um, no, she's obviously fantastic. Julia Roberts is mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, Margot Martindale, love her, too, you know. So th they just, they made the movie to me, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that if it had been not celebrities that are mm -hmm. as well known, it still would have been fantastic. Mm -hmm. But I, I also think that they added to mm -hmm. the wonderfulness of, is that even a word? I'm not it, sure. It is now. Uh, great, it is now, of <laughs> you know the overall movie. You know, it, it definitely had a feel that mm -hmm. was meant for these actors and actresses yeah, to play. Absolutely, I, I think, I think if, if it hadn't had the all-star cast, Still would have been a great movie, but I, I, def I definitely think it heightens the Absolutely. experience. Yes, because like you, you know that these people are like the top of their craft, mm -hmm. 
And you know, I've, I'm not like a huge Julia Roberts fan. I, you know, I don't know why. It's the same reason I like don't like Matt Damon for some reason, <laughs> even though he's a pretty good actor. Right. But I went in and I was like, wow, that was that was amazing. Um, and Benedict Cumberpatch, it was nice seeing him in a role that wasn't like yes. master genius or like space villain. Yeah, from to see him do something a little yeah. different. different. Than what we're in, yeah. And it was really nice. I was like, wow, this guy really has like more, more, um, more of a wide ability. Range of, of yeah. Talent. Than what I had been seen before, so I was I was pretty impressed with that. I agree. I was impressed as well. I knew that I knew him from something, mm -hmm. but I wasn't positive until I went on IMDb and looked it up later, like what he was from, and I was like, got it. Now I understand. Right. Um, so going along, um, you know, with the with the amazing cast of um, and with Benedict Cumberpatch, mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. Who, quick question. Yes. Ivy, her character. Yes. Who is she played by? Don't know. All right. I'm not positive. That's fine. I didn't know either. I recognize her, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I forget. I don't remember her name. I was told that she, um, she was played. She, she was in Law and Order, I believe. Yes. So I, I don't watch Law and Order, so I'm not huge. I, I don't them. really know her. So, but um, her and there's a scene between her and Benedict Cumberpatch's character yes. where they're playing the, where they're playing the piano. Ivy and Charles. And it was, oh god, that was such a great scene. It was um, so nice. But then it get, it gets ruined by the ant. Can we talk about how mean and nasty the ant is? Well, we first have to, mm, shoot. Should I mean, we spoil it? No, let's let's we'll just let's just say that she's she she's a little to Charles, her son. Right. Um, she's she's pretty nasty to him. I we don't want to do any spoilers. Um, but she's really mean. Um, like Which for no mean? reason. And the father is always like really nice to him because you know he's he he feels bad for him because mm -hmm. the mom's just gets on his case for no reason. Granted, he's kind of. Um, he's not the smartest. He always he he, he misses the he's funeral. He's shy. He's shy too. Yeah. So he he's easy to be picked on. But um, yeah. The his his mom is so mean. So okay. For I'm not. There's so many things that I want to say that I can't because it will ruin the whole movie. But um, see it. Okay. Yeah. Um. No. She has a reason for being mean yeah. to him. To a certain extent, yeah. But just the fact that, like, that's your son, you know, like, yeah. how are you gonna treat them like that? Especially a tender moment, like what was happening yeah. at the piano, and it was exactly. just, just so beautiful. And I was just sitting there, like, oh, oh I know, that was like, I the was like, wow, that's so cute. And then she comes in and yeah. drops a bomb, and you know, it was, it was sad to watch because yeah. you know, he's kind of the underdog, and mm -hmm. you're, you're rooting for him. You're like, you go, sir. Like, yeah, speak up. And then, no. No, no, his yeah. mom is not having it at all. Yeah, I mean, I, I get why, because to her it'd be like, I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm right. Just gonna throw some symbolism down there. Yeah, it's like we're kind of beating around the yeah, bush. Yeah, yeah, we're beating bit. around the bush. <laughs> um, you'll understand you understand when you're older and when you've watched this yeah. movie. Yeah, um, when you've grown up. No, yeah, when you've grown up. So um, I understand why, because, you know, she's it's like a symbol of, like, something bad that happened. From her past. From right. her past, yeah. But at the same time, as you said, like it's your son. You know, you he deserves to be treated with like a certain level of, of respect, of respect and, decency, and decency, like a human being. And, not and I loved how right because I I'd been like really annoyed that she had been treating him so bad the whole movie, mm -hmm. and then like when his father just like starts yelling at her, right? Not yelling. Well, yes, yelling, but yelling. not they not got not, the, not they got into a tip. they got into a yeah a fight, but um. I, I just I felt really I felt was like you know you know this needed to happen mm -hmm. because there was no reason for her to be treating him like that bad. Agreed. And the father's just like you know what this isn't this isn't okay. And it's like you know what all right. I agree. Um, I agree. I'm glad that she yeah. stuck up for him. Yeah, I am too. All right, so we're gonna go to some beautiful segments now, um, such as Notorious Netflix, which is what I'm a part of. Um, I don't know what we're doing this week. We'll find out. Hello, and welcome to Notorious Netflix, a program dedicated to showcasing some of the worst movie masterpieces Netflix has to offer. I'm Matt. And I'm Haley. Are you afraid of sharks? What about tornadoes? <laughs> well, you effed up, you loser nerd, because here's Sharknado. Sharknado is a movie about a tornado that carries sharks into the Los Angeles area, causing a sharkopolis. The main character, Finn, and his two friends journey to find his estranged wife and hopefully survive the oncoming storm. We're going to tell it to you straight. This was originally a sci-fi movie, solely made to be a B-movie. There was never any intention of it being good. And honestly, aside from the, ki the killer Sharknado, that's the best part about this movie. Some movies like The Room or even Troll 2, you can tell are really trying to be good, which results in a lot of awkward moments. 
But Sharknado embraces the B-movie flair and really takes it to the next level. There are some poor visual effects, mm -hmm. flimsy dialogue choices, and questionable scenes, but all of these come together in a lovely mixture of so bad, it's good. One scene that comes to mind is when the characters find a car and try to drive through the flooded Los Angeles streets. They reach a traffic jammed area where a freak shark flood occurs and eats a lot of the people. It is absolutely incredible. At the end of the day, Sharknado is a film that begs you to grab some friends and make some commentary while you watch it. I laughed so hard through the whole thing, I was actually in pain at the end. I give Sharknado five shark attacks out of five. And I give Sharknado five tornado bombs out of five. That's all for this week's Notorious Netflix. Check us out next time for some more horrible movie masterpieces. And welcome back. Um, so we're going to dive right back into it, um, but we're going to focus on John Wells, who is the director of this movie. Um, I personally don't know a lot about him. Um, I know he's directed some you know, smaller pieces, a couple episodes of ER, right. a couple other TV shows. He's mainly a producer, um, but obviously here, I think he did a fantastic job. What, Absolutely. What do you think? No, I agree. When um, I watched the movie, I expected it to be a big name director. Mm -hmm. No offense to him, who I'm not saying that mm -hmm. he's not you know, talented, but he is mostly a producer, and he's only directed, I believe, five mm -hmm. other different things, ER and Shameless and mm -hmm. um, shows of that nature. So when I found out that it was him that directed, I was very surprised, you know, because mm -hmm. especially when you're doing um, an adaptation from a play to a movie, mm -hmm. you kind of, you need a very strong director if you mm -hmm. want to keep the authenticity of the play. Um, so I think he did an absolutely fantastic job mm -hmm. doing that, you know, especially working with the A-list cast that he had and with the play that he had. So um, I was very impressed. I was very impressed, and I want to see if he's going to direct anything else. And if he does, I will go and see it because I yeah. was very impressed with his work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think, do you think um, that maybe the fact that he's only directed a couple, like, episodes of shows, and the shows that it seems like he's directed have been, like, an hour long, do you think that maybe like that actually might have helped him in this with taking a play and turning it into a movie? Where like with with it, maybe I could be incorrect, but I, I'd assume that with a TV show, there's not a lot of room for any like random fluff or filler that you might see in like another movie, um, not necessarily of this caliber, but in general. Um, do you think that that might have helped him um, adapt the play into a movie more, um, more? Um, I'm not more sure. accurate to the original work. See, mm, that's a tough one. Mm. Because he's only directed TV shows, mm -hmm. and there's not much room. Uh, there, actually, in TV shows, I feel like there's a lot of room for fluff. You know, there's a lot of creativity that a director can have with it, mm -hmm. and you can change things. But because, well, A, this movie was two hours long, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty long for a movie, and B, because they were trying so much to take the play and and collaborate it with the movie to make it basically the same thing. I think that there wasn't much room for, not necessarily creativity, because you have to do a lot of different things with a movie than you would with a play, but also it was already there. You know, the stage directions were already written, the characters were already there, the lines were there, and so you kind of just had to take it and make it your own a little bit and just put a little bit of a twist on it and then, you know, hit the ground running. So. That's, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> yeah, I'm not right. really sure the yeah, answer to your question, but I mean, that's, I think that he did a fantastic job, and yeah. especially, again, turning a play into a movie like that was phenomenal, so. Yeah, it was. Um, speaking of phenomenal, uh, do you, do you think that, um, this movie, this movie obviously has been n Oscar, uh, nominated for some Oscars. Right. I believe for Best Picture, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure what the other one is exactly, um, do you think it's deserving of those? If you could choose Oscar nominations for anyone else in the cast, um, would you, if like in your dream Oscar world, um, would you, you know, try and nominate anyone else? Uh, who do you think should win, uh, basically? Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my biases again. Meryl Streep, of course. You, you know, as obviously a fan of hers, but also as an actress. You know, like I look up to her so much, and I aspire. Like, if I can be half as fabulous as she is, you know, I'll be, I'll be set. Um, so yeah, obviously her. Um, I'm always rooting for her every time. Like you know when they have the little boxes and like you're yeah. waiting for like the nominations to like I mean the the winner to be announced. And I was like Meryl, Meryl, come on, Meryl. I was like you win. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm absolutely rooting for her. And I think that 
you know, this does have a shot. As, mm -hmm. You know, it was um, hugely successful as a play and mm -hmm. obviously quite successful as um, a movie, especially you had mm -hmm. that cast sign on. So it, there has to be something magical there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, definitely Oscar nominations yeah. all around. I, Rooting I, for it. I definitely think it, it deserves, um, if not best picture, some a, a very similar in degree award because right. I thought I thought the casting was excellent. Um, the, the movie itself was amazing, I mean, based after a play, but the mm -hmm. play is amazing. The movie is amazing. Right. Um, I thought the the, the director was great, um, and I, I really think Meryl Streep. Obviously, she carried the entire thing. She was amazing. Um, Julia Roberts was also absolutely incredible in this right. movie. Fantastic. So I, I definitely think that there should be there should be some wins. Um, with this, um, hopefully that's what happens. At least I hope. I was also um, surprised to see how grown up Abigail Breslin was. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you noticed that. Do you do you remember like her? She was like the little baby in like Driving Miss Daisy or like some Sunshine movie, and she has grown up so much. Yeah, look look it up. Wait a minute. Because I get yes, the that was the fourteen year old. Year old. That, from that was Abigail Breslin. Yes, crazy. So like she wow. has developed so much into herself and also an actress, so I was also very happy to see her in this film, yeah. Oh, that's insane. Oh I know. God, wow. I know. It's like watching Dakota yeah, Fanning grow up, and like oh, now yeah. I'm watching Abigail Breslin oh grow up, God. and I'm like, what have I done with my life? Good for you guys. <laughs> hey, yeah. I tried, and I'm, count. I know. Yeah. I know. Okay, I'll have to IMBD her after this, because I'm, I'm impressed. Wow, I didn't even, wow. Yeah. Didn't even notice her. To okay. carry herself with that yeah. cast, yeah, I was Jesus. very impressed. Oh so, God. yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, so we're going we're gonna to get into a little spoiler part of the movie. Because I want to talk about it. makes me mad. I was mad for a good hour and a half after this. Um, so, spoiler alert. Stop watching right here. You skip a couple minutes. Um, we'll tell you when the spoiler's done. Um, you're good. All right, mute cool. it. All right. Yeah, mute, mute it. Just, just let, let, us, let us talk. Um, so, um, the thing with Charles and Ivy. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert, even though you already are past the spoilers. Uh, they're brother and sister, and they're dating, basically. Um, yeah. I was mad as hell. Well, okay. So originally we find out that they're first cousins. Which isn't. And that they're, you know, in love. You yeah. know, we, the first scene I was watching with my friend and we just like looked and we were like, yeah. what? Weird, but not right. the weirdest thing. Right, and then you find thing. out that the reason Margaret Martindale is so rude to Charles is because it was her, her. sister's husband's child. So... <sighs> Crazy, like no, plot really, twist. Um, yeah, no, I wasn't. I was mad that she found out yeah. because they had set plans to go yeah. run away to New York, and you know they couldn't have children anyway because mm -hmm. she had had a procedure done. So, mm -hmm. you know that was out of it, and I was rooting for love. Yeah, I really was. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you go love, and you know. And then I was sitting here like thinking philosophically. I was like, well. If they didn't know that they were related, yeah. you know, if two people really don't know that they're related, but they are, is it still wrong to, like, get together? And then I'm like, mm, still weird? But yeah. I was still rooting for love. I was like, you guys are cute. Yeah. You know, and, like, Ivy had had problems with, mm -hmm. you know, finding relationships in the past. So I was really rooting for her. And then that just, bomb got yeah, dropped. Just, and oh she, I, I want to know what happened to her because she just drove off. And I was like, well, uh, I mean, game over. Yeah, we can speculate. Like... I, I personally like to think that she was just like, whatever, like, and just kept going. But, like, in reality, it's either, like, things go good, yeah. things go terribly wrong. Well, because she was already dealing with the fact that it was her first cousin. Yeah. And then it's like, nope, just kidding, he's your brother. Yeah. And that, then, uh, you can't just, really, you can't really win with that one. Yeah, There's it, no coming back. It just, it just made me really upset because, like, the whole, the whole movie is basically just people being angry and right. sad and stuff and like there's the one, the one thing ounce happens. of happiness and then and then just like it, it's <laughs> it's it's exactly like the piano scene it's yes it's like oh this is so sweet and nice your cousins it's kind of weird but whatever yep. you know and then it just gets destroyed and it's like oh my god because they could have gone their entire like lives not knowing that mm -hmm. they're brother and sister and it would have been fine because they, they didn't care that they were cousins, right. obviously. So it's like, you know, whatever. But now that they find out, it's like, wow, that's Yeah, you that's, can't that's come back from that. Oh, that's a God. game over. Jesus. I'm so upset about that. Still a great movie. Oh, yeah, incredible. <laughs> great movie. The, the fact that I am this upset about this movie True. Um, well, because makes I it think, very good. You know, this, this movie was raw, and it was authentic mm -hmm. to real things. You know, families aren't, like, full house, you know? Yeah. So um, I like that there was a certain 
like, ouch, you know, you yeah. got emotionally invested in these characters. We're talking about this now. We're getting so worked up over the fact mm -hmm. that these poor people found out that they're brother and sister, mm -hmm. you know, and so you get emotionally invested in these characters, and I think that's what makes for a fantastic movie, and that's what yeah. makes for a fantastic cast and also award nominations because you're taking, as an actor, taking these characters and making them real and making them something that people root for or somebody that somebody hates or like somehow you're emotionally connected and invested in these people and so you know I think I don't know I'm so uh, I'm so mad about Ivy I know it's, it's bothering me it's upsetting yeah but Jesus um, <laughs> all right so fine and final little words about the movie anything you want to say um, before we go to um, yeah you know I just said it just, just yeah, I loved yeah. I loved that it was raw and people can relate. You know, yeah. obviously not on every level. I hope yeah. that you don't fall in love with your brother, you know, and, and things like that, because that'll make for a difficult, that'll make for a difficult time and, and Christmas dinner. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, I just, it was something that, you know, you're able to, families are not all smiles and rainbows, yeah. you know, so um, it was real and I liked, I liked that. And obviously the cast, again, yeah. rooting for Meryl, because... Ah, she's great. Everything I would have said, already said. I agree completely. It's it, ev it's real. The cast is amazing. Yep. Um, it gets you really emotionally invested, which I think is a sign of a great movie. If Absolutely. you're not if you're not looking at your phone or your watch or whatever to find out when it's over. Right. Especially with a two hour movie. Yeah, exactly. You know, I was glued to the screen yeah, exactly. the entire time. Um, so. Yeah. So final conclusion. What are you thinking? Go see it. You need to you need to see it. You need to rent it. You need to buy it. You need to make signs for Meryl Streep when she wins, <laughs> duh. Um, no, it was fantastic, and I really suggest you see it, even after we just kind of spoiled everything for you. Spoiler. But not uh, everything. You don't know what else Yeah, there, there's other things movie. in the movie. Jeez. Guys, um, I agree. Go see the movie. It's great. Um, I watched it. Made me interested in the play. Um, I might check it out. Um, I mean, if it's, if it's that good on screen, it's got to be that good in, mm -hmm. the, in the play itself. Um, so, yeah, check it out. It's going to be awesome. Check it out. Um, that's all we have for you guys this week for appropriate audiences. I'm Matt, joined by Amanda Dodson. Um, check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. See you next week, guys. I'm Matt McGrory, and I'm joined by Amanda Dodson. Ah, I fucked it up. That's not my name. My shame will you carry on for You started with two session. guests, so now you're going to have none. <laughs> yeah. <I'm kidding. laughs> I forgot all the other questions that we were going to ask. Excuse me, we look fabulous. We're the two most attractive people in this room. True.